Hi, hello, hello everyone, and welcome to what's probably going to be the last video before your economic exam, which is going to be on Friday the 4th of November from 11.45. It is Wednesday the 2nd of November, and yesterday on the 1st of November, the RBA announced that they were going to increase the cash rate. Now, a very, very important thing about this video is that you do not have to use this information, but you can if you want to. So this is all going to be extra information. It's kind of pretty general to cash rate rises at all. So even if you're going to use the 2.6% from previous, so from October, all this information is still going to be totally relevant to that. This is just the most up-to-date in case you want to use the most up-to-date stuff in your exam. So let's get straight to it. So on the 1st of November, Philip Lowe, the governor of the RBA, announced a 0.25% increase in the cash rate target to 2.85%. So the current target cash rate is 2.85%. So if you want to use that, you can say the cash rate is 2.8, the target cash rate is 2.85% as of the 1st of November 2020. So this was done in response to an increase in the inflation rate to 7.3%, which is the highest that's occurred in over three decades. And that inflation rate is expected to peak at around 8% later this year. So the RBA is continuing to increase the cash rate to try and combat that increasing inflation rate and bring it back towards the target range. One reason why they went for a 0.25% increase rather than 0.5, like was would be expected when inflation is still happening at such a rapid rate, is that wage growth in Australia is lower compared to other advanced economies. So wage growth is growing at a slower rate than other economies, so we're being hit by that inflation harder than other parts of the world. And that means that if they were too aggressive on the rate increase, it would have too much of an effect, and then that might actually lead to worse in economic conditions next year and potentially recession type activities occurring. So one really interesting thing that was a quote that I pulled from the RBA statement yesterday um, that we're gonna go through and pull apart is this one here. So one source of uncertainty is the outlook for the global economy, which has deteriorated over recent months. So recently the global economy is has been deteriorating and they're saying that we're potentially moving towards a recession globally. And another is how Household spending in Australia is going to respond to the tighter financial conditions they've been facing. So one major thing with these increased cash rates is that households with variable rate home loans should have lower discretionary incomes. But the RBA's board recognises that monetary policy operates with an impact lag and that the full effect of the increase in interest rates is yet to be felt in mortgage repayments. So for example, if I look at my Combank app and I look at my home loan, often even though the Commonwealth Bank today will announce that or they'll increase their um, interest rates, it won't be for about a month, if not more, that my actual mortgage repayments will go up. So that's a lag that occurs. It also means that for investment or borrowing activities, the lag of that um, interest rate increase isn't going to occur for some time because often if someone was committed to getting a mortgage to buy a house, one increase in the cash rate isn't going to stop that decision making. Whereas down the line, because the lag takes up to two years for the full effect, down the line that is going to affect some decision making next year. So higher interest rates and higher inflation are putting pressure on the budgets of many households and consumer confidence has fallen and housing prices and housing prices have been declining following earlier large increases. So working in the other direction, people are finding jobs, gaining more hours of work and receiving higher wages on average, which is um, positive. But many households also have built up large financial buffers and the saving rate remains higher than it was before the pandemic. So during the pandemic, a lot of people were spending much less and having much lower expenses. So a lot of people built up a buffer of savings during the pandemic. And that means that these higher um, interest rates aren't going to have, and if, although it will be affecting the households, we're not going to see the effect of it for a while because people are going to start burning through their savings first, which is not something that we've had before when the cash rate has been rising. And finally, or not finally, we've got one more thing after this. So the RBA remains committed to increasing the cash rate until inflation returns to the target range. So this stance is technically less expansionary as the RBA moves towards a neutral cash rate of around 3%. However, it's likely that VCAR would accept you talking about it as a slightly contractionary approach because the neutral cash rate and the contractionary cash rate are kind of questionable or up in arms at the moment. So you can talk about various different things as I've dropped my pen and I will find it later on. So then lastly, we've got how this might affect um, transmission mechanisms. So we're going to look at three of them here. So if you want to talk about it and you get a transmission mechanism question on the exam, 
You talk about these increases in the cash rate, just like a contractory change in transmission mechanisms. So with the cash flow channel, a higher cash rate means that increased repayments are gonna occur on variable rate home loans, and that leads to a decrease in discretionary income for households, which is gonna to lead to lower private consumption spending and then lower aggregate demand. With the exchange rate channel, if we have increases in our cash rate relative to overseas countries, this can create incentives for overseas countries to invest in Australian financial institutions that creates more demand for the Australian dollar and therefore can appreciate the Australian dollar. And then lastly, the availability of credit channel. As the cash rate increases, banks are likely to create stricter lending criteria and therefore decrease loan approvals as they are less willing to loan out money as people are more of a risk when they loan it out. So there's a whole bunch of different information about the most recent cash rate rise. All of this information is still relevant to the 2.6% cash rate increase of October. So whichever you want to use, if it's the 2.85% for November or the 2.6% for October, totally fine, totally up to you. Just make sure that in your answers on the exam, you are dating the data that you use. Um, make sure you check out, if you, go, if you Google RBA snapshot of key indicators, or just go to Trading Economics and look up Australian Indicators. That's got all your up-to-date information for all the statistics you should know for the exam. But other than that, if you have any other last minute questions, feel free to comment below or send me an email, sean at the running Other than that, I hope you are feeling very, very prepared for the exam and enjoy binge watching this channel today and tomorrow. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.